Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about everything skyboxes, how to edit skyboxes, create skyboxes, modify skyboxes, how they work, everything. Let's first of all start with what a skybox is. So a skybox is a special type of material which is placed on the world um, extremities, in this case of everything past anything else that can render. So I'm not a skybox and neither is the plate beneath me, but anything out in the horizon distance in sort of all 360 degrees is a skybox. That isn't always true, sometimes there are maps which uh, use skyboxes a little bit differently, but for the purpose of this video, everything on the horizon line at any point is just a skybox. So you'll see here that if I uh, hop into Smooth POV and look around, we've got this sort of red and blue uh, sky space skybox going on. It was actually edited from a previous take of this video, but it's still um, perfectly fine to look at. If you create an empty space world, you'll see this skybox. It won't probably be the same color as it is right now, but you'll see this skybox. I've deleted the cubes from the default space world just because I find them a little bit distracting, especially when talking about the things behind them. So now that you know that a skybox is basically a material, how do you edit one? So we're going to start with editing. So I'm going to hop over to Smooth POV, which I'm already in. I'm going to go ahead and equip a my material tooltip, point it at this guy and hit secondary. And that drops it into the tool here. And then I can go to edit material. And you'll see that it's just a material. Here it is, a projection 360 material. To illustrate me editing it, I'm going to go ahead and change these tint properties at the bottom here. So we'll change tint one to this sort of green color. And we'll change tint two, uh, I don't know, over to somewhere there. There you go. And then we'll take a look around. We've got that sort of cyan color and that green color now in our skybox. So what are the components of a skybox? So in this case, because we're using tinting, we're using a tint texture here, which is just some clouds. I won't be covering tint texturing or anything like that in this. There are quite a lot of properties for a Projection 360 material. Um, there's also other types of skyboxes, which we'll be covering. Uh, I do have some videos, including a video on how to do a day-night cycle using a Projection 360 material, so do check those out in the video description, but we'll be covering just the sort of basics today. So right at the top of this material, you'll see that there is a texture property. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and grab this texture, turn to the right a little bit, and push trigger. This spawns the image, which is responsible for that skybox. Let me expand things out a little bit, and you'll see what we've got here is just what's called an equirectangular equi projected image. And what that means is it's a sphere wrapped around to a uh, rectangular image. If you've looked at a map of the world, where America's on the left and sort of Russia, Europe, etc. on the right, that's an equirectangular projection of the Earth, which is a sphere. And so this is exactly the same principle, um, except it's a space skybox. You can see here there's a little bit of distortion sort of in the way that this curves around. Everything just looks slightly weird. You'll see that more when we look at sort of um, more earthly skyboxes that have buildings or landscapes or even people in them. You'll see that distortion a little bit more. Here it's not that obvious. So any image that's like this will work. In fact, actually any image will work. It'll just look weird. So just try whatever you want. Um, there's a lot of skyboxes available for you to try out though, and they are easy to get to and they're inside Neos Essentials. Let's try some of those out just to kind of show you what they do and how changing them affects the lighting, which I talked about earlier. So I'm going to hop over into my inventory, and I'm inside Neos Essentials. Let me turn on my private UI. And inside Neos Essentials, you'll see on the right here, there's this um, folder called Skyboxes. Inside this folder, there is a bunch of skyboxes to choose from. All of these ones will work, you just have to apply them. Let's go ahead and spawn a few, just so we can take a look. I'm going to spawn this one, because I know what it is. I'm going to spawn this one. And I'm going to go ahead and spawn this one as well, a crazy one. So we've got a sort of landscape, clouds, and crazy. In that skyboxes folder, all the skyboxes come with inside their own material tooltip. This is great because they're a little bit difficult to work with unless they're inside a material tooltip. You'll see that more later. I'm going to go ahead and equip this material tooltip, point at the sky like I'm some sort of uh, god, and hit trigger, and boom! I hope that didn't blow your pupils out too much. It kind of did for mine. And you'll see we're now transported to the side of a sort of a cliff on a beach. Over there, there's some people. Uh, we've got the sea out that way, and we've got some terrain out this way. I'm not entirely sure where this was taken. You'd have to look at the attribution, uh, attribution data for this skybox to find out where it was taken. Uh, do remember that, as with most things uh, in terms of 3D assets, uh, there is licenses available on them. Um, the Neos Essential skyboxes are um, usually licensed quite well. Uh, the team goes through them occasionally and clears up any that aren't, uh, so feel free to use them in your worlds. If you do find any online, though, do double check the licensing. So anyway, here we are on this. Uh, this photo was taken. Um, you know, someone was standing here, they took this photo, and then they made it an equi-rectangular projection, and they brought it into Neos. Let's take a look at another skybox. We've got this orange one here. Shoot the sky. And it's a cloud, sort of orange, sort of sunset, or maybe an alien planet, where the sky is more red than blue. Quite like this one, actually. 
Let's take a look at this final one and equip it. And this one is a sort of psychedelic, um, uh, what you call it, kaleidoscope sort of style thing, where we've just got this repeated sort of flower everywhere. It's quite trippy because uh, I can't really tell where I am in the world. If I if I didn't have this plate, I'd certainly be lost. And this is just to show you the sort of range that we have with skyboxes available. We can basically create any sort of scenario that we want based on the skybox. Do note that the skybox, like I said, changes the lighting. You can always see this if you have what this is, which is just a shiny metal sphere. You can find this in my public folder under utilities, and it's showing what the reflections in this world look like. Now, by default, the reflections in a world will look like the skybox. If you want to change that, you'll need to use reflection probes. I'll link a video in the video description about uh, reflection probes. You'll also see that it's changed the lighting. Like here, it's kind of a sort of reasonable lighting, but if I find that, where are we? Where did I put them all? Over here, yes. If we find that earthly one again, you'll see it's much brighter. It sort of affects the uh, the tonality of the lights and everything like that. There'll be more on that later. Um, if you have issues with that, there are a couple of properties I'll point out to play around with. Um, the best advice though is to just play. There's no rule of thumb I can give you about making things look good. I don't know what your visual style is. So those are Projection 360 skyboxes. I did want to cover briefly how to make one yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this material tooltip, take out the material inside it, and we'll create one from scratch. To create from, from scratch, you'll need an equirectangular image. You can also use a cube map. We'll go over that in just a moment. I'm going to start with this equirectangular image. This isn't a perfect skybox. Uh, that's because it's, I don't think it's exactly equirectangular, but I did want to show you the flexibility that exists to just try and use any image. Provided it's this, you know, it's sort of widescreen or 16.9, ideally 2.1 but um, it's neither here nor there, you can try. So this one came from a website full of skyboxes that was, I think, meant for a different engine, which is why this one didn't work. But like I said, I wanted to show you how, um, how to go about it. So with Material Tool equipped, I'm going to open up the context menu here, go to Create New, and then we want to go to Unlit, and then Projection 360, which is the Skybox Projection 360 material. And then I'm going to grab the texture with my right hand, and with my left hand, click into the texture, and you'll see here we've now got this ball here. I'm going to put that into my Material Tooltip, shoot the sky and we're now transported to the sort of alien planet. This is where the problems that I talk about start happening. You'll see things are a little bit more stretched vertically and they're also quite low quality. Skyboxes come in all sorts of qualities. This one is a quite low quality skybox. I think it's 800 by 300, which is why we're having so many difficulties with the quality of it. Do note that higher quality uh, skyboxes are uh, less optimal. So it's all about balancing your visual aesthetic in the world of what you want to achieve. I still quite like this one, particularly if it was away in the background, there's lots of sort of foreground details, you might be able to get away with it. Uh, that was just to show you how to create one. If you have any other image, just try and check it in. You can even just search Google images or search Google for skyboxes. You'll find them all over the place. Like I said, do do keep in mind licensing. I'll put some links to some uh, reputable sources for skyboxes in there and you can have a go at that yourself. Now the other type of skyboxes are cube maps, and you might come across those. So I did want to talk about those. Those are relatively new to Neos. Um, cube maps are a way of sort of expanding the skybox using uh, a cube rather than that, this equirectangular um, projection. If you type in cube map into Google Image Search, you'll usually see sort of an unfolded cube. You know that sort of net that you might fold it up out of paper when you're in school or something into a cube. Um, you can actually create cube maps inside of Neos. You can also import them, but you can create them inside of Neos. As an example here, I've taken this picture, which is a picture of my uh, broken mug from the uh, end of the MMC, and I've created it with the cube map creator. You can find the cube map creator inside the uh, create new editor cube map creator. And that will spawn this. And then you just drop the image you'd like to use. If you have a uh, cube map which is broken out into these images, you can go ahead and take a look and, and add them in. You just grab the image and you click in the slot. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I did the same image in each slot. And then once you've hit create there, that will take a while, which is why I did it ahead of time. You'll see that we get this ball. And that's another suitable skybox. So we're going to go ahead and uh, equip our developer uh, our material tool again. Delete that old skybox. We're going to go ahead and put this one into our tool. Actually, let's just do that. There we go. Aim it at the sky and hit primary. And now you'll see that the skybox is my uh, broken cow mark. This also shows how the cube map style uh, skyboxes work. You'll see that we've got a corner down there and a corner up there, and they all form a sort of uh, distorted where the middle's kind of bowed outwards uh, skybox with the, uh, the corners all lining up there. You can see that's the sort of edge of my desk lining up with the other edge of my desk in the photo. And it continues all the way around. The top one's a little bit scary. It sort of stretched the, the cow up quite, quite widely. So there it is, it's just a sort of cube laid flat. 
So like I said, you can find those inside uh, uh, various websites, etc. Go ahead and take a look at creating them. If you find any uh, resources that talk about creating them, I, you know, with Facebook, uh, not Facebook, sorry, Photoshop, and uh, you know, maybe even with a camera like the one we saw, which was a a, a beach, go ahead and do it. It should work in Neos. It supports most uh, of those formats that you'll find: the equirectangular or the cube maps. There are two other types of skybox. I wanted to show you those because those do allow for more customized lighting in the world. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one out here, delete it, and we'll create a procedural skybox. So to do that with our material tooltip equipped, I'm going to go to create new, and then we'll go to skybox and then procedural sky. This will create a skybox, which might be hard to find. There it is. And we can shoot the sky of it and you'll see there you go. This resembles the uh, default skybox from Unity. I think it's basically the default skybox from Unity. It might use a slightly different material process, but it, it uh, in terms of color and appearance, it basically is. Uh, we've got the sort of blue sky uh, trans uh, transitioning to a white at the horizon and then a gray floor. You'll also see we have this editor window here where we can sort of change things around here. So you'll see that the sky tint is currently um, tinted a little bit gray. Let's go ahead and change that to maybe a more ready color. So now I've got a red sky, and we'll change the ground color to, I don't know, sort of pink. Let's keep it a little bit darker. There we go. And now what we've got is a sort of, you know, almost neon or, or maybe princesses and My Little Pony style skybox going on. You can see there that I've, you know, I've just created something. Even if I don't have the resources outside of Neos, I can just create the visual effect I'm after. In this case, I might put some land or some terrain such that I can't see the horizon line that well, because it kind of gives the impression that we're up high, even though we're not, we're sort of on the flat part of the world here. If the world is too bright here, you can drop down this property called exposure. Now, exposure also does exist on the Projection 360 material, and it controls how, how bright things are generally. So if I drop this down, you'll see now things have dropped down to a little bit darker. I can even go less than one. I can go down to, say, 0.1, and now you see you've got this sort of really dark, moody purple. But I'm going to drop that back up to one for what's next. You'll see that the procedural sky has a property on it called sun quality, sun size, and sun. And you'll actually see that the sun is over there. I glanced at that a moment ago. And that's because the procedural sky material can control and look at, well, not control, it can look at where the sun is and then render that sun in your skybox. Let's go ahead and set this up properly. Because I created the material newly, it won't be set up correctly. This sun property is set to null. So I'm going to go ahead and open the inspector, and I'm going to drop light into the sun here. Now, light at the top of your world here is the uh, sun at the world. It's a directional light. There's more on this one on my lighting tutorial uh, as part of the world series. I'll link that in the video description. But now you see that the sun is over there. If I go ahead and find my light mover tip, there's lots going on in this world. You find this in the central tools. It's the white sort of lightsaber looking thing. I can now move the sun around and it'll actually move on my skybox. It's almost sort of like feeling like a god here. I can make it nighttime, make it sort of noon, Make it nighttime again. Really cool. You can also change the color of the sun like this, although I don't think that's affecting the skybox too much. I'm using the touchpad there to affect the color of the sun. Actually, I think I need to click once I've done that. Yeah, there we go. Now it's orange. You'll see it, uh, not orange, green or yellow. I can't really tell. Um, but now you'll see that that color has been reflected on the skybox. Let's see if we can get another color. There we go, blue. And now we've got a blue sun. You also see that I am a little bit blue if I go into third person now. I'm a little bit blue because the light coming out of the sun is now blue. So do keep that in mind when you're playing around with the uh, sun. So that is the uh, first type of... I'm trying to make the sun white again. There we go. Uh, that's the first type of procedural skybox. There is another one. I'm not really familiar with that one, but I will show you it briefly. Let's go ahead and grab a material tool to begin. Head back into Smooth POV. Inside Smooth POV, we're going to go to Create New, Skybox, and then Gradient Sky. Again, this will be created in the world somewhere. You just have to kind of find it. There it is. Let me take the old one out. Suck that one up. Shoot the sky with it. That might be the old one. Uh, it's really difficult sometimes to sort of find skyboxes when they are uh, similar to each other. That'll be it. There we go. So now you see that that is all black to start with. We can change the base color here. This might be a bit difficult to see. The base color is just this color property here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to like a little bit gray. And I'm going to go ahead and add some gradient. So I'll just add one for now. And we'll say that that goes from red, sorry, red, uh, full transparency to, let's do it like a blue there, 
full transparency. So we've just got blue right now, but if we specify a direction, so I'm going to go ahead and specify one here, you'll see that we now get this horizon line with a base color of the gray, and we've got a blue transitioning up to a red. And also see this on the reflection here. It's actually quite nice on the reflection there on our shiny sphere. So that is the gradient sky material. Play around with it. I'm actually not that familiar with it, um, so I uh, won't play around too much. I'll get lost, etc. But take a look at it. It's uh, quite a cool uh, one for doing just a, a, a you know a real quick uh, procedural skybox. Do note that it doesn't have the sun. So if I spin around, you'll see that the sun is no longer there. I do like the uh, fact that you can render the sun using the procedural sky skybox. Uh, that's the only one that really supports it. You might see the sun um, brighter in other sort of materials. It depends on you know, what's going on, etc. Most important thing is to tailor things to your visual aesthetic. If you uh, like the way things look, go for it. Uh, if you don't like the way things look, go ahead and change them. Try it out. I'll put some links in the video description, like I said. That's all I have for you on Skyboxes. If you have any questions, do leave them in the video comments. I'll get back to you soon with another video. Goodbye.